I've been an urban explorer for over two years, and I've seen some awesome stuff. But amusement parks, specifically Disney parks, are an urban explorer's brass ring. Once my best friend began working at Walt Disney World, I finally grabbed a hold of that ring. Disney's River Country, an older water park, has been abandoned since 2001. I've seen so many stories about the park, but none of them has done the mystery of it justice. Back in the early 80s, the brain-eating amoeba killed an 11-year-old boy. But as many of you know, that had nothing to do with its closing. The park conflicted with new laws that hadn't passed, but River Country was much different than the other parks. When you go into the main Walt Disney World parks, you get this Disney feeling. You truly feel like you're in a magical place. But with River Country, you get a different feeling. An odd feeling. Like, like you're an outsider. Right? I remember standing in front of the dilapidated lake in the middle of the park, and I just felt like something wanted me to get out. I really wish I would've. But let's go back to when I first found out that I was going to get the chance to go into the park. My friend was working a job that would give him access to River Country, trying to keep it ambiguous so that I don't upset the mouse. <laughs> and he told me that on one Sunday night he would be willing to allow me to walk through the park, but only for two hours. My heart nearly jumped out of my chest in excitement. I arrived in Orlando on March 17th. I was going to stay a week at my friend's house. His home was only 10 miles away from Disney, so it worked out perfectly. The first night there, he stirred up my excitement with a story that he claimed was told to him by a former security officer. <laughs> yeah, so my security officer friend told me that one night he was sent there to check in on a suit. A suit is essentially the highest security job at Disney. But anyways, management hadn't heard from the suit for hours, so he was sent into River Country to inspect a possible intruder. So my security officer friend goes into the park and is immediately enticed by a voice screaming for help. The voice was coming from one of the lake docks. On the dock sat a suit, sobbing like a baby. And next to him sat a girl dressed in all black, blood flowing from cuts on her wrists. My friend looks down to grab his radio, and when he looked up, the suit was still there, but the girl was gone. He quit the day after he told me the story. <laughs> you have no idea how excited I was after he told me that story. As an urban explorer, River Country itself was exciting. But as a paranormal lover as well, you know, the story made the park sound even more amazing. The next day, I went to the actual Disney park. I rode in with my friend at 6 in the morning with a big childish smile on my face and $400 in my pocket. I first went to Hollywood Studios, which was my second favorite as a kid. I sat near the front of the park for nearly two hours, spending most of my time FaceTiming with my girlfriend. Finally at nine, I was one of the first people to enter the park that day. And oh Jesus, was I a child again. Nostalgia hit me like a ton of bricks as I took in the atmosphere of the park. But that nostalgia was completely crushed as I started going on the rides. On the Tower of Terror, I had my first weird encounter. During the part where you travel through the hallway, as soon as the doors opened, I noticed someone wearing an old army uniform behind one of the walls. It was very obvious that the person was trying to hide. They even had a giant grin on their face. I thought that this was just part of the ride, but nobody else reacted to it. I just brushed it off and thought that they didn't see him. Hmm. My next odd experience was on the Great Movie Ride. It was about noon, and it had gotten incredibly hot, so I was already a bit flustered at this point. At the Wizard of Oz part, I noticed something a few feet behind the Wicked Witch. I adjusted my glasses and looked harder. It was the soldier again. But this time... 
He looked like a corpse that had just been worked on at a funeral home. So artificial. But that giant grin still covered his face. After my second sighting, I decided that it was time that I changed parks. Once I left, I hopped on a bus to Magic Kingdom. I had the time of my life there. Plus, no more incidents. The only odd thing that happened to me was I think I saw a group of suits, three men in black polos were rushing towards Space Mountain. Other than that, you know, the nostalgia overtook me and I felt like a kid again. <laughs> Around 11 that night, my friend finished his shift and picked me up. We both drove right home, and I told him what I saw that day. Wait, seriously? An old worker went around telling a story of something else happening in the great movie ride last summer. He described to me what the former worker saw, but it was completely different. Later, I spent an hour packing for the next day. One digital camera, two camcorders, two phone chargers, food, and water. I felt like I was going to war, rather than exploring an abandoned park. The plan for the next day was this. My friend would get off work at 8.30. He would come pick me up, and then he would drop me off at River Country. Then he would wait at Magic Kingdom until I was ready. I barely slept that night. Sunday, leading up to the arrival at River Country, felt so surreal. I was going to explore the first official abandoned Disney park. The excitement filled my body up until the point where my friend drove away after dropping me off. I opened the metal gates and peered into the entrance. The excitement was replaced by pure fear. River Country is closed. A dilapidated sign read. The faux water tower that stood in the entrance had a banner on it reading the same message. I hadn't even stepped inside the park, but I could tell something was up. I clenched the straps on my bag and stepped inside it. The pathway was lit up by dull bulbs. And this surprised me. Why wouldn't the electricity be shut off? I snapped a few pictures of the sign and the water tower, and headed to my first destination. The Nature Trail. The Florida environment seemed intent on taking back this park. So it was hard enough trying to find the entrance to the trail, but as per a map I got off the internet, I found it. This is also where I found my first artifact. I'll get to that later. Literally directly to the right of the trail's opening, I noticed something white covered by plants. I bent down and moved the plants out of the way. And to my surprise, it was a Mickey Mouse glove. I used a stick to move it around before I snapped a few pictures. I noticed a jelly-like substance on its palm. The nature trail didn't have any lights, so I had to use my flashlight. Maneuvering around all the plants and trees was infuriating, but what I found halfway through made it worth it. On the side of the trail, next to a snow-white tree, was a sign that sat on a pedestal. Quote-unquote. Something broken. Dumping grounds. The sign read. That's when I decided to fire up one of my video cameras. As I documented the sign, I felt like I got hit by a big wave. My head felt as light as a balloon. I stumbled around like I was fighting a powerful bout of vertigo. I got really nervous, so I sped through the trail. And just as I was about to leave the trail, I heard something in the bushes on my right. My heart started racing, so I broke out into a complete sprint until I reached the end of the trail practically fell down the stairs at the exit. Once I was out, I reminded myself that what I heard was probably just an animal. I sat down on the stairs, chuckling to myself, until I noticed something else under some plants a few feet in front of me. Using a stick, I moved them. A plastic eye was covered by weeds. It was in a long, oval shape, too. I made a Rorschach, hmm, sound before I snapped a few pictures of it. 
I then made my way towards the slides that went into the main pool. On my way, I passed a towel return pavilion, and inside of it, a bright red light caught my eye. The wooden window at the front was slightly opened, so I moved it to the side. Inside the pavilion sat two things. A camcorder nearly identical to mine was set up on a table. Recording. And a white wig sat next to it. I reached into the pavilion and pulled out both items. The wig seemed identical to the hair that the ghosts in the haunted mansion had. I snapped a few pictures before pulling out my video camera. I was going to document myself going through the videos on the camcorder first video was 15 minutes long. It featured a family, a mom, dad, two daughters, just going through Magic Kingdom. The cameraman's responsibility was shared by the mother and the father. They looked so happy throughout the whole video. The second video was only 25 seconds long. It featured the father holding the camera and sprinting through the Sport Disney Pop Hotel courtyard. It was at night, the father sounded frantic. He briefly pointed the camera behind him, and what I saw sent chills down my spine. A black silhouette of a monstrous thing chasing him. The video ended with the father dropping the camera. Thoroughly creeped out, I set the camcorder and wig onto the pavilion counter. Turning on my video camera's flashlight, I continued my trek to the slides. I asked myself if I should just leave. Over and over, the atmosphere of the park made me feel so uneasy, and it was like something wanted me to get out. Once I got to the slides, I felt a sense of urgency to get up the stairs as quick as I could. It reminded me of when I would run up the basement stairs as a child to avoid the, the monster after I shut off the lights. So I did just that. I nearly fell a few times, but I got up the stairs in seconds. Below the slides were two pools. I held the video camera to my side and took pictures with my digital camera. It felt so odd that 20 years ago, these pools were filled by thousands of children every day. Hey! My breathing halted and my body froze up. The raspy, angry voice that called out to me came from right below the slides. I moved my flashlight downwards, and I saw him. The soldier from the day before was standing next to the pool where the slides emptied. He didn't look like a fresh corpse anymore. He now looked rotted and decayed. He had no nose, but his haunting grin stayed intact. He stared right into my eyes, like he was burrowing into my soul. He waved enthusiastically, and then skipped towards the stairs leading up to the slides. My heart was beating faster than it ever had. I could hear footsteps approaching the winding stairs. I looked over the edge of the slides. They had some water in them, but if I jumped, I would easily shatter my legs. I had to make a decision. Either jump or face what was coming up the stairs. I closed my eyes, prepared to jump, but then I noticed something. Silence. No footsteps were coming up the slide. I took out my flashlight and positioned myself so that I could see every stair, but nobody was coming up. The piece of paper with a rock on top of it was now sitting on the bottom stair. I scurried down, grabbed the paper, and leaned on the wall behind me to avoid a sneak attack. Dig up the secrets, or leave, scarred. I guess I was going to have to invest in some therapy, because I chose to leave, scarred. I just broke out in a sprint, weaving around, hoping that I would find an exit. I eventually reached the main lake. Shit, that was directly in the middle of the park. I stood on the docks and stared at the lake, trying to catch my breath and reconfigure my brain. Something had to be fucking with me. Sir? 
I whipped around and gripped the end of my flashlight, prepared to swing it. But the voice behind me came from a security officer. He was wearing an older looking uniform and mouse ears, but I assumed that he still was a security officer. Oh, thank God. Look, I know I shouldn't be here, but something isn't right. Someone is screwing with me. Please help me get out of here. The security officer looked at me like a father ready to scold his child. He opened his mouth as if to respond, but he didn't. His face quickly changed from anger to a look of pure anguish. His mouth just dropped open and his eyes went into his head. I started to move backwards, but he moved forward. That's when blood just started to pour out of his nose like a faucet. I tried to move back more, but I tripped over a fake life preserver. My bag, video camera, and digital camera all flew from my possession and into the lake. I closed my eyes as the guard fell to his knees, but when I opened them, he was gone. Did I finally get a breather? Hell no. As I sat up, I heard splashing about 25 feet behind me. I twisted around and tried to make out the source of what was in the water. The moon provided just enough light to see it. The same figure from the video on the camcorder. It was a humanoid figure it was completely featureless and instead it was jet black all around it was holding a decaying goofy head and it was heading for me i took a deep breath hopped to my feet and started to sprint away as i began moving i heard something land next to me it was the goofy head its eyes stared into mine acknowledging me the next couple of minutes were a complete blur with no flashlight, I was running aimlessly, hoping to find some exit. Also, all around me, I could hear people. It started off as normal theme park noises, but but after a couple of seconds, the voices sounded frantic. That's when the screaming started. I was too terrified to look behind me to make sure that the silhouette wasn't following me. I didn't want to chance it. Finally, after a minute of sprinting, I reached a fence. I jumped up, grabbed the top, and vaulted myself over. Luckily, I had my phone in my pocket, so I immediately called my friend and begged him to come grab me. I was actually only a couple hundred feet from the entrance. He told me that he was on his way and hung up. I sat against the fence, exhausted and terrified. I looked next to me, and under a collection of stones sat a small, ripped piece of paper. You can't expose me. It read. I just started laughing. Not that I still thought that someone was screwing with me. I was laughing at the sheer madness of the last 27 minutes. I'm actually pretty sure that I laughed until my friend picked me up. So... Why am I posting my story now, when it all happened nearly four months ago? Well, that's because my story doesn't end there. The scariest things came up while I was trying to research what I had seen. I'll spare you every little detail, but from late March to mid-June, I tried to connect everything odd I had seen that night. Last week, I finally pieced it all together. So... First, the soldier. Through multiple sources, I learned that on July 9th, 1976, a 49-year-old World War II veteran died in the parking lot of the original Disney World. He had gotten into an argument with another driver, a fight ensued, and the vet ended up dying after slamming his head on the ground. His picture matched the man I had seen. Oh, but of course he didn't die at Disney, quote-unquote. Nobody dies at Disney. This is a reoccurring theme for some of the other explanations. The security guard? I mean, do you think the 11-year-old boy was the only person to fall to River Country's brain-eating amoeba? No, of course not. Two weeks before that boy died, 
a longtime Disney security guard also passed away. The guard had been working at River Country when he was forced to wrestle with a very high lifeguard in the main lake. It is my belief that during the scuffle, the security guard accidentally got some of the lake slid up into his nose. A week after this incident, the guard died. Official death? Brain aneurysm. Bullshit. I did some work, but I got to look at the hospital records. He had the same symptoms that the 11-year-old boy suffered from before his death. <laughs> Next up is the Mickey glove. This one was extremely tough. I've connected it to five possible stories, but this is the front runner. In August of 2011, a Disney employee was convicted of the rape of four minors. I had to go through some grisly court docs before I made a connection. The worker used a specific type of lubrication for each crime. After even more digging, I discovered that the lube looked exactly like the jelly that was on the hand. Oh, and the guy's job? He played a Mickey in Epcot. The video on the camcorder is next. This is still pretty much a mystery, but I think I have something. Back in late 2009, a woman posted on tons of Disney forums asking people if they had seen her daughter and her family. The woman posted a picture, and they were the same people from the video. But after doing some name searches, Every person in that video is alive and well. I'll have to research more. The Haunted Mansion wig. This was the hardest thing to connect. It took me two months of digging to attach a story that would even fit. But back in 2003, a Disney worker went missing right after he clocked out. After a two-day search, his body was found. His car had fallen into a swamp near his house. After the police pulled his car out of the water, the body was inspected. Cause of death? A single shot to the back of the head. He had been shot execution style. But how does the wig come into this? Well, in the trunk of his car was a broken ghost prop from the Haunted Mansion. I did some more research to find that the ghost's hair was identical to the wig that I had found. The plastic eye. Now, this one was too vague to make a connection, but I found the other one in my mailbox on May 4th, after I had gotten the court documents for the Mickey hand. And, um, last but not least, the Shadow Monster. This one is going to take some suspension of disbelief. When Disney World was being built, there was a lot of controversy concerning the land that the park was being built on. Some of the land belonged to a group of Native American families who had lived there for hundreds of years. These families were practically thrown to the side by Disney, and their land was desecrated. Now, I have heard of a former worker give first-hand accounts of seeing creatures that resembled the Native American skinwalkers, but the creature that I'm talking about is a bit different. I'm talking about a form of shapeshifter that adapts to the environment around them. Who was the main mascot for River Country? Goofy, right? But I didn't make this connection on account of the mascot head alone, but a picture of Goofy right now. He has a dog-like head, sure, but the rest of his body is pretty much just a jet black, featureless body. Now take away Goofy's head and gloves, and add in a featureless jet black human head. That is exactly what I saw that night. River Country was once Disney's most thriving water park. But today, from what I've seen, it's a dumping ground for their dirty secrets. Using that touch of Disney magic has caused their secrets to literally haunt them. But I've seen videos of people exploring River Country, and none of that stuff was in there, some people may say. So, by all means, go ask those people about the day before they explored, and if they were contacted by something within the Disney grounds. It felt like the soldier was inviting me into his world so that I could discover their truth. 
I just hope that this gets big enough that the company themselves answer for their crimes. Perhaps I'll be the next big whistleblower. Or perhaps I'll end up like the haunted mansion worker. But if something does happen to me, please honor these words. Expose them. Expose them.